Now that we're able to get our heroes, let's go ahead and add the post, put, and deletes for them. Now first, we're going to go over to the Express app, because let's take a look at the routes. That's where we're doing the gets right now. now if we open this side by side with the hero service, we can see that the route is pointing to get heroes right here on line 7 over to what's in line 5 in the hero service. So we need to create this pairing for our post, puts, and deletes. Let's start by coding up the hero service for the post. We're going to function for post hero, and we'll need to pull that hero out of the request body. So first, we're going to create a constant here for the original hero, and we're going to pull out the ID, the name, and the saying. Now let's create a hero object using the hero model. So we'll do a new hero, and we'll pass in our original hero, and then we'll save that hero using the model here. So we'll do hero.save. Now let's first assume that this just works, so we'll return back status at 201, and we'll return back the hero that we created. We'll also do a quick console log. But what if something went wrong? We can make a little function called checking server error, and that's going to check the responses in the error to see what happened. And we'll return back a code, and if a problem occurred, we'll just get out of here. This will be useful because we might have other things like puts and deletes, which might also need to check these kinds of errors. So let's create the function down here for checking server error. And we said we were going to pass in the response and error. And we're just going to check to see if there's an error. And if so, we'll return back a status of 500. And we'll send the error right back. Now we could reformat this, do a bunch of other things as well. But for now, it gives us at least a little bit of error handling. Now that we've created our function right here called post hero, we need to expose it from this hero service file. So go down to the exports and we just plop it in there. And then we can go back to our routes. And remember we have this router for get for heroes. Now we can do router for a post. And that's just going to be hero singular because we're only going to post one hero at a time. And then we'll also have the request and the response. And all we have to do is call the hero service post hero. This is a pattern I like to use where the router effectively shows you all of the ways you can talk to your API. And then all the dirty work is done by the hero service. Well, if things worked, we should be able to go over to our debugger. We should be able to press the green button. Now it's running in Node. We didn't get any error messages here. And now we can open it up in the browser and take a look at it. Here's our application. I like to open up the developer tools, see what's going on. And then we'll click on Add New Hero. It hasn't hit anything on the network yet. We're watching the network tab. We'll add an ID of 999 and say Fred and hello. Just see if that works. And then we hit it, and now we can see right there that hit our API, and we're getting, and we are posting new heroes. Well, what if we want to go and add the puts and deletes? We can follow the same kind of process, because right now the delete isn't doing anything. Let's flip back over to our code, and we'll follow the same process. We can keep the debugger running if we want. It doesn't really matter, because we're going to have to restart it anyway. Let's go backwards this time. Instead of using the service first, let's go ahead and add these two down inside of the routes. So now, instead of a post, we're going to have a put, and we're going to delete. Now when we put, we just want to know what's the ID of the thing that we're putting, that we're going to be updating. So we'll pass that in. We'll also need the body, in this case, because we're going to update it for the original ID and know what the new values are. With the delete, we simply just need to know what are we deleting. Well, that's easy, but let's flip over to the hero service, and this is where most of the work is done. We're going to create a put hero with a request and response. And the first thing we have to do is think about we're pulling out the information from the body and from the URL so we know what hero do we want to update and what are the values we want to update it to. So first, let's pull out the ID of the hero. Then let's create an updated hero object. And we'll use the same ID because we're not changing that. And we'll pull out the body's name and saying for the updated hero. Next step is we have to find one of these. So the find one technique using Mongoose will let us find some of these objects, in this case one of them, and we're going to do it by an ID of whatever that ID value is. And then once it comes back, it's going to tell us the information inside this callback. It'll let us know if there's an error or a hero. This is just the API of Mongoose. We're going to take advantage of the check server error again, which is right up here. We'll just copy that down. If there's an error, we're going to get out of there and let the user know. Now, what if there's no error, but it just didn't find anybody with that ID? We should also have another check in here for check if found. I'll say if it's not found, that's kind of a problem. So let's go create that function. There's our check found. 
will pass in the response and the hero. And if basically if there is no hero, well, then it's not found. We'll pass back a response status of something like 404. We'll send a message back to the UI saying the hero was not found. Otherwise, let's return the hero object. Well, that gives us a nice escape clause, but what happens when we do find it? Well, if we find the hero, we want to update the hero's name to the updated hero's name. And likewise, we want to update the saying. Once we get those, we are going to call the save method again. It has the same arguments that we used earlier. And now we're just going to go copy and paste those three lines of code from inside what we did for the post. It'll be slightly different because now we're checking the server error again because we're hitting the server one more time. First we got the hero, now we're going to go back and update it. Instead of returning back a 201, we're going to return back a 200 with the updated hero and the message will be that we updated the hero. So the update has a little more logic in this case than we did for a post because post we just take the hero, we put it in. For updating it, we have to check if we have one or not, do a little error handling, and then we actually make the changes. And let's not forget to export it. Okay, so now we've got that, we need to make our delete next. So we're gonna delete a single hero at a time. Once again, we need request and response. Some of this code we can reuse again. We need to get the ID, so we'll copy that down. We can make an easy function to do that too. Now let's take a look at the APIs, because in this case we wanna find the hero and remove it right away. So here we have find one and remove. Now notice we also have find one and update. We could have used that earlier as well. There's just a lot of different APIs that we can use. So we match that with the property of ID and the value ID that we passed in. And then we'll use a promise chain. It'll let us know, okay, but here's the hero. And if we got that hero, it's gonna check if it was found and we'll return it back and say it was deleted. So here we'll call back into the check found. If we try to delete something that wasn't there, it's just gonna let us know, look, it wasn't there. Otherwise, we're gonna say, yep, the status was good. And we'll pass back the hero that was deleted. Well, that works, but what happened if it didn't work? Now let's write the error handler. I don't know about you, but I don't trust demos without a little bit of error handling in them. Because in the real world, errors happen, right? So here we can check to say, all right, check to see if we've got a server error and we'll pass in the response and the error and then we'll return back out. And finally, we wanna make sure that we also export this. So now we've got our service ready to go. We also have back in our routes, we've got the delete. We have all four of our methods ready. We can restart the debugger by clicking this button up here. There's also a command sequence with the keyboard. We'll flip back over to our UI. Let's refresh the page. And I'll clear out all network traffic just so we can see what's going on. And now let's go ahead and add a hero. We'll add a new one in here. We'll do nine and we'll do Star Lord, and we'll say hi. And there's save. So now we can see there's the 201 that came back. We can look at the payload that went across the wire. We can also select Star Lord and change hi to buy. Now we can see that we passed in nine, and there's the payload again. We can also delete Fred. And notice the times we have over here in the network tab 77, 111, and 54 milliseconds, respectively, for our three different operations. If we refresh, we'll see over here how it was 46 milliseconds to get the heroes. While these are fast, a lot of this depends upon where your data is in the world and how you can geo-replicate it. And we'll take a look at how we do that using Azure's Cosmos DB in the next part of this series.